Hi, glad you could join me for the uh, making of the Roots painting and song. Uh, I was hoping to kind of share some of the processes with you. My name is Sherry and I created the song Roots and then the painting to go with it and Mark Engler joined me on creating the music and accompaniment to go with the song. Um, I'm going to post the lyrics below so that you can get an idea of some of the symbolism and such in here. The painting itself um, it was a lot longer process than you're seeing here, so the number one thing you're missing out on on it is layering. It is acrylic on paper. I don't normally paint on paper with acrylics. I usually do acrylic on canvas or canvas board, masonite, something a little firmer. And part of that's because I, I tend to want to work the painting a lot and do a lot more layering than I did on this one. And I do a lot of drip work and things like that usually. I wanted something a little more fast and simple feeling, and I guess that's why I went with paper, even though it is a more fragile surface. Um, I use a lot of washes, um, a lot of watercolor technique, even with my acrylics, and a wash is basically where you just water down your paint, and you can see me doing that here in the video quite a bit. Um, I was asked also, did I have a pre-sketch for this, and yes, I did. I sketched everything in to begin with and then erased a lot of it so that you can only barely see the lines and you'll see when I when I cover it with the blue and the uh, yellow ochre and such it disappears and so I was being asked well how is it that I know where to put things and I guess when you go ahead and sketch it out a lot of the time you kinda have an idea where you put that item in the painting already, so even if you can't actually see it, or even if you can only see a teeny tiny portion of it, you just know where you want it to go with it. So even though you can't see all your lines, they're, I guess they're there in your mind's eye. And a lot of the time I don't do that when I start a new painting, but I do usually for watercolor or for very tiny paper pieces because I can't afford to repaint and repaint one spot if I do mess up. I have to be a little more firm about where things are going on paper. Uh, someone else had also commented that they noticed I used my finger a lot in my painting, and I guess I'm using it as a second paintbrush and blotter. I tend to blot paint up with it, and I also tend to want to move the paint around a bit with it and 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 get it to just the exact amount of thinness that I want it and I suppose I, I just can feel it better with my finger than a paintbrush so I guess I do use my finger as a second paintbrush so that's what I'm doing when I'm using my finger all over the painting uh, let's see was there any I think that was the main questions I was asked about the actual painting, and if you have some, feel free to email me or Facebook me, and I'll be happy to try to answer them. I don't always think of the questions that others will have. Uh, the a little piece of notebook paper I put at the beginning of the video was just kind of for fun. That was the original song, and honestly, mine are pretty sloppy when they start out, and that's what they all tend to look like, all scribbled up and messy, and I I just kind of thought that was fun to throw it in there, because I, I don't think it necessarily fits the image people have <laughs> of how messy creativity can really be. Um, the symbolism in this, a lot of it I think you'll see in the lyrics, um, but a lot of it, of course, I, I pulled into the painting. I am born and raised Kansas, and so a lot of this is very Kansas symbolism. Uh, my roots are are here in Kansas, um, and I think all of us um, struggle with how, how to apply those to our own lives. Do we agree with them? Do we not agree with them? Are they who we want to be? Do we want to move past them? Do we want to embrace them? And I, I guess that's kind of what this is about. Um, most the, you know, the wheat and the sky, prairie and sky, that gold and blue, the colors are all Kansas. The rainbow ending on the windmill, the windmill is not in the song, but to me that's just a very quintessential Kansas symbol. And the rainbow ending on it, no, that is not a reference to Oz, someone asked me that. It's more the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's, it's I guess for me, kind of symbolic of that, that golden uh, reality of one's childhood roots, and, and I, I was kind of trying to embody that, I suppose. 
Um, Mark Engler helped a ton with this. He came up with a lot of the help on the music in the background. We used his angle, uh, which is a neat little device you can use on the guitar to get dulcimer type sounds out of your guitar. And in this song, uh, we used it as a uh, percussion piece in the background, kind of hammering the strings to get a very particular sound, and I really liked that. And then he came up with the really neat idea of beating a frying pan with a rag, and we got that really sharp, harsh, tinny sound with that, and I really wanted something with a very firm, steady, earthy beat. And so between those two items, I feel like we achieved that. He was wonderful help. I'm hoping we can put together an album sometime soon, in the next year maybe, and we'll see. Uh, the track, The Roots, is on CD Baby, and you can also get it on Amazon and iTunes, I think, if not already, very soon anyway. And I will play the song for you now, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much, all of you, for all of your support. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Born to dead, princes and paupers, castles in the air, rolled down the rainbows, ate their black birds, sank in deep, got them coursing through my veins. Roots keep coming up, coming up, yeah. Keep coming up, coming up, yeah. 